Find all critical points for the following function if any exist. So the first thing that we need to do is find the partial derivatives. Find the first order partials. All right, so let's start with finding the partial derivative with respect to x. So I have 4x cubed plus 8x multiplied by y minus 2. And so now we just need to simplify. So let's say we can factor out a greatest common factor here of 4x. So I have 4x multiplied by x squared plus 2 multiplied by y minus 2. I'm just going to leave my partial derivative like that. We definitely need to factor here. If you recall, again, from optimization in R2, when you're solving for critical points, you need the factored form to solve for the variable. Um, but there's nothing else to factor out here. We could distribute that too, but we'll see how the rest of this goes first. So next, we want to find the partial derivative with respect to y. So x to the fourth goes to zero, and... Now I have 4x squared multiplied by 1, and then we have plus 16 multiplied by y minus 1 to the first times 1. So we can just leave it as it is. And looking here, we have a greatest common factor of 4. So this becomes 4 multiplied by x squared plus 4 times y minus 1. And there's nothing else there to factor. So we are all set. We've found our first order partial derivatives with respect to x, with respect to y, and we're ready now to solve the system of equations created by setting both partials equal to zero. Set the partial derivative with respect to x set equal to zero, as well as the partial derivative with respect to y set equal to zero. So let's see, we have 4x multiplied by x squared plus 2 times y minus 2 is equal to zero, and we also have 4 multiplied by x squared plus 4 times y minus 1 set equal to zero. So here is our system of equations. And because smaller numbers are better or easier to work with than larger numbers, we can divide both equations here by four, which leaves us with x multiplied by x squared plus two times y minus two, set equal to zero. And then we also have, I guess we don't even need those brackets anymore. We have x squared plus four times y minus one, and that is all set equal to zero. Okay, so let's make sure we give ourselves enough room. So at this point, you want to decide which equation are you going to work with. Do you want to work with the first order partial with respect to x set equal to zero, or the first order partial with respect to y set equal to zero? They'll both work, but it's going to be easier to try to use, most of the time, to try to use something that's factored. So I'm going to think about case one here. So let's solve the first order partial with respect to x set equal to zero. And again, you're solving for both x and y here. So we have x multiplied by x squared plus 2 times y minus 2, and that is set equal to 0. So by our 0 factor property, we have two cases. We have x is 0. Oops, we did it. And then we also have x squared plus 2 times y minus 2 is equal to 0. So we can box up this first case. That's We'll substitute into our second equation. And now with this second case here, it's up to you whether you solve for x or you solve for y. You can go either way. So looking at this particular case, I see I have an x squared here, 
as well as an x squared in my second equation. So I'm just going to solve for the x squared and leave it at that. So I have x squared is equal to minus 2 multiplied by y minus 2. So we've solved for x here, and we can now go ahead and substitute these back into the other equation. So we are going to substitute into the equation defined by the partial derivative with respect to y set equal to 0. So again, just to keep in mind, we have a lot going on on this page right now. We are setting this second equation here or substituting each of our cases into this. So case one, we'll do the cute one first, when x is zero. So when x is zero, we are going to have zero squared plus four multiplied by y minus one is equal to zero. So this leaves us with four multiplied by y minus one is equal to zero which is just y minus 1 is equal to 0. And we're so excited, we see that y is 1. So we can say that therefore, you know, when x is 0, y is 1. And we could just write this as an ordered pair. So we can have that x, y. When x is 0, y is 1. So now we want to do the same thing with our second case. So case two, we have when x squared is equal to negative two multiplied by y minus two. And again, we're substituting it into this equation here. So we are replacing that x squared with a negative 2 multiplied by y minus 2 plus 4 multiplied by y minus 1, and that is equal to 0. And now we can go ahead and solve for y. So distributing negative 2 through to both terms and also distributing 4 through to both terms, this leaves us with, we have a minus 2y plus 4 plus 4y minus 4 is equal to 0. You could have also divided both sides by negative 2. So we are left here with a 2y is equal to 0. In hip hip hooray, we have y is 0. Now the only thing with this is we still don't know what x is. So we actually have to plug this back in one more time to find our x value. So again, let's keep in mind, where did this come from? All right, so plugging this back in, we now have x squared is equal to negative 2 multiplied by 0 minus 2. All right, so negative 2 multiplied by negative 2 is 4. So we have x squared is equal to 4, and if we take the square root of both sides, we see that x is equal to plus or minus 2. So we have two potential critical points here. So therefore, we have that a potential critical point is the ordered pair to 0. And another potential critical point is the ordered pair negative 2, 0. And so we have three potential critical points here in total. We have the first point we found, 0, 1, and then we have the second two that we just found. And again, we can't make any conclusions other than that they may be critical point or they may be extrema. We cannot classify them until we apply the second derivative test.